Hey guys, welcome back to Sustainable Living. In this video today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to build a chicken coop. I gotta tell you a quick story about this chicken coop. I started building these coops about, oh, probably 10 or 15 years ago when we really started first, when we first started to get into sustainable living. And our journey first started with chickens. And so that led me to the internet looking for different types of plans to find what was the most economical chicken coop that would be good for a backyard coop and mobile and, and all those different uh, facets that we were looking for. And uh, anyways, I came across this chicken coop that has just been phenomenal in my opinion. And I have built these coops and sold them to different customers. And so I wanted to share this build with you guys in hopes that uh, you would find this beneficial to you. And so I hope you guys enjoy the video. It's gonna be a little lengthy, but I did the best I could to document measurements and all the different steps to build this coop so you can do this on your own. I wanna tell everyone welcome back to all those that have subscribed to our channel. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please consider subscribing and following us on our YouTube journey and sharing sustainable living tips and building activities and fun outdoor activities. This is a video that I've been wanting to share with you guys for quite some time now. So I'm excited to share it with you guys. Before you get started though, do me a huge favor and smash that like button down below. All right, let's go over some of the materials that you're gonna need and also some of the tools you'll need to build your chicken coop. So you'll need 12 two by three by eight foot boards. I always purchase three extra boards just in case if I screw up on one of my cuts, I have plenty of lumber. Also, when you're picking your lumber, you wanna make sure you find some lumber that is clean with very few knots because these boards, we're gonna make trim pieces. You then wanna purchase three sheets of half inch plywood. Get yourself a box of two inch screws. You will also need some one inch roofing nails, some inch and a half staples, and a box of one inch staples. You will also need some half inch staples. I then purchase three bags of the two and a half inch hinges and one bag that contains an inch and a half hinge. Make sure you have some good wood glue. A roll of chicken wire. Now this is not necessary, but I go ahead and buy some caulking, some exterior paintable caulking. So when my coop is all done, I can go and caulk all my edges before I paint it. And it just gives your chicken coop a much cleaner look by caulking your edges. I'm gonna go ahead and wire my chicken coop with electricity so I can plug it in if it gets really cold and I can put a light bulb, an incandescent light bulb to provide a small form of heat. So you don't have to do this, but you can if you want, and I'll show you how I will wire my chicken coop for light. So you will also need one of these galvanized pancake electrical mounts for this light here. Grab yourself a small roll of tar paper, at least a five foot length of four inch sewer pipe. This is thin wall, thin wall sewer pipe. You will also need a four inch sewer cap. It's a slip on one end and then it's threaded for your cap. A 45 degree angle slip on both ends. So you need a 90 degree street elbow with a male slip on the one side. All right, some of the tools that you'll need is a staple gun. The gun that I use basically shoots 18 gauged brads or 18 gauge uh, staples. A good skill saw is essential, along with an air compressor, a miter saw. Now a table saw is absolutely essential. Some of the smaller tools, you'll need a speed square, measuring tape, a, uh, a straight edge knife, some chalk. You'll also need a four and a quarter inch hole saw blade. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all my boards marked out and then I'm gonna do all my cutting and then ripping my boards. Ba-da-ba-ba 
Right, guys now that we have all of our boards marked let's go ahead and use the miter saw and get them cut now that we've got the boards cut we're gonna rip all of the boards except for the 47 inchers with the 22 and a half degree angle cut and the 12 inch boards. We're going to now cut some trim to cover up that wire. We're going to cut the trim to half inch so the chickens don't poke their feet on any of those little wire burrs that we just cut. So let's cut some trim. All right, when you're done with one two by three, you'll end up with three pieces of trim one square edge and then two with rounded edges because they were the uh, outside edges. These are half inch, save these, we'll use those for the build later. This piece right here, you're gonna end up with a one inch piece of trim. We're gonna save this because we're gonna use this board to build the face of our chicken coop when we put our chicken screen up.
you want to be about five eighths of an inch and that's about right where we want. So what we did was we went ahead and fastened the roof to the top, glued it as you saw, but we went ahead and gave ourselves a half inch overlay on this side, but we went ahead and made this flush right here. So this side is flush and a half inch overlay, but you'll see that we have a little bit of a gap right here, but that's going to be okay because we are going to, that means our coop is not exactly square, but we're going to torque it with a strap and that should bring that to flush and then we'll finish screwing this off. A couple ratchets, it has brought us to flush. These were the 16 inches by 40 inch, 48 inches in length. We're gonna want to cut out a notch so we can basically slide it up onto the side bottom panel. So we wanna go an inch and a half down and then we wanna go over an inch and a quarter. And then mark our little square. There we go. Be sure to cut the face of the board that you want to be showing so you do not end up with cut lines on your boards. You only have to make that mistake once before you will remember to cut your boards face side up. So 48 on this side and then 47 and 5 8 on this side. And then you're basically going to be making your nesting boxes. So you're going to have two 3 inch pieces, two nine and a half inch pieces and then two 11 inch pieces and then that'll make up your 47 and 5 8 lengths on this other side you're going to have a back panel that's going to be 10 inches and three quarters two of those and then you're going to have the top of the nesting box the top of the nesting panel which is going to be 12 inches and you need two of those cut three boards that were 10 inches wide okay and they were in the length of 47 inches 47 and three quarters of an inch so what i did is basically um, i stacked those three boards together and then i just cut them exactly in half and uh, and then i just stacked these three together and then we're going to rip these at an angle in order to give us our nesting box sides to build our boxes. This corner, it went up to 14 inches. And then to this corner, we went to nine and three quarters. And then that'll give you the slope that you need for your nesting boxes. All right, so as you put your boxes together, Go ahead and put your slats at 12 inches on center and staple them in. Glue them in and staple them in. build your frames these are going to be a 45 degree I'll give you the measurements here so this bottom piece is a, is 11 inches and make sure you cut it at 45 at the bottom and now obviously this is a 45 now this long piece that comes up is going to be 38 and 5 8 
and these angles up here are going to be cut at 23 degrees. So you got 23 degrees there and then 23 degrees there. Okay. And then this piece right here, this length right here is going to be eight and three quarters. And then coming over here, we've got another 23 degrees, 23 degrees. And then this full length coming down on this shorter side, coming into a 45 is going to be 34 inches, 34 and a half inches. That's what this is going to be right here. It is pretty imperative to use clamps to hold these frames together. It'll really help you in pre-drilling and screwing your frames together and gluing them together. Your frames will come out much straighter if you'll use this simple tip by using the clamps. From the panels that you cut that were 10 and 3 quarters, you're going to cut, that's going to be used for your back panel. So one of the measurements is going to be 34 and 3 eighths on your short side. And then your long side is going to be 38 and 5 eighths. And that'll give you the angle that will match to the roof. So these 40 inch boards that you cut, you're going to want to cut one of your ends at 23 degrees. And then that will be the next piece that will go across by your panel. And you'll screw that in and you'll do the same on this other side. At some point in this video, you're probably thinking, holy crud, there's a lot of tools and a lot of equipment, and you're probably wondering, am I really gonna save that much money by building my own coop? That's what I thought when I first started this, but after I bought my equipment, and then I sold a few of these coop coops, I was able to get all my money back. So that is one thing you may consider if you don't have any tools to do this job, is to build a few, sell a few, and get your money back, and then go from there. Plus, your second or third coop will end up being better than your first coop. Now, we don't have an absolute perfect fit towards the top up here, but that's okay because what we will do is we'll put a paintable caulk before we paint and we'll fill up any small gaps that we have and then it'll turn out really nice when we paint it. this center piece basically you should have roughly about a 12 inch gap and that's what this piece is so with one of your 12 inch pieces of scrap wood or your 12 inch pieces that you've cut go ahead and measure roughly from the center of this board down here all the way up to up here which is going to give you roughly around 26 inches and then to get your slope you're going to do about 23 and 5 eighths on both sides and then that should give you your slope underneath the top here if you remember those 26 and a half inch boards that we cut and then ripped in half if you'll take your corners and just cut a 45 on both ends then you can take uh, some of your scrap wood that you have left that will uh, fit the gap of your door you may have to trim it if it's not exactly right. My board right here is going to be cut at 11 and 3 quarters. Uh, my top board was 12, so I'm giving myself um, a quarter inch so it'll open and close just fine.
So after you strip your wires, you want to pay special attention to your green wire, all white wire, and your wire that has a black line on it. After you've drilled your hole and fed your wire through the hole, you're going to take the wire that has the black line on it and go ahead and feed that onto your copper or brass screw and tighten that down. Then you want to take your white line and go ahead and make a hook on that and hook that around the silver end. Then you'll have one line left with a green line on it and you will hook that to the base plate of the electrical outlet and screw that in. Now you can fasten the porcelain outlet. So we're going to go ahead and make the bracket for our uh, feeder hopper. So the way to do that is once you've already put it in through your hole that you cut, then just get yourself a piece of scrap lumber and then come through down here and just kind of mark a general line. So we know that when we cut our hole, we're going to come down a little bit. So here we are, 
We've got the, uh, here's the plank that goes up into the chicken coop. We have a latch that will latch the door shut. As you can tell, we put shingles on it. A couple quick notes. Uh, we did put some uh, drip edge. Normally I don't put drip edge on these, but I wanted to make sure that the crack of my nest boxes didn't get any moisture in them. So the drip edge will help with that. And part of the way um, you saw it in the video, but I didn't really describe it. When you cut your trim for this trim piece that goes underneath this, you want to make sure you cut that at 23 degrees of an angle. And then that'll give you a flat surface for that drip edge to go against. And then that'll give you just a little more lip for that water to drip down. But as you can see, here's our nesting boxes. It's four on one side and then four on the other. One of the key features though, when you put your coop in, you wanna make sure that you see these two screws that we put in the side of this nesting box. You wanna make sure that uh, you don't staple your box to your frame. The reason why you put screws in it is so you can undo the screws on that side and then do the screws on this side if you need to take your nesting box out and do any repairs or anything like that. There's the roosting bar that goes clear to the other side that we cut the little angles to make it a little more rounded. Same on this other side. We went ahead and used a feeder. Our feeder is going to be a four inch sewer pipe with a 45 degree angle. I'll show you the back. We went ahead and wired it for lights. So if it gets super cold or we need to add electricity out here, so they keep laying, keep the lights on so they'll keep laying. Now, I didn't glue any of my pieces together. The purpose for that is, in the event if we ever did get any moisture down into this tube and I wanted to clean it out, then I can pull it apart, clean out the stuff that's got all jammed up, and be able to be back in business. We got a good mesh, so when they go to the bathroom, it'll go completely through. The nice thing about this coop is that the, the fecal matter will go clear to the bottom, and it makes it easy to clean out and rake underneath the coop and use it where you want it. Now this back door, we'll put a latch on it, but for now I don't have one yet. We'll just push it up like that. This is just gonna be an access door if we need to access the feeder and fix the feeder or anything like that. This gives us an access door to the coop. You can actually put a piece of wood right here and then you can put a watering can right here. And if you wanted to, you could put an automatic dog water and drill a hole and put one throughout the wall. But we're gonna put our watering can out in the yard because our animals are gonna be free range. So we decided not to put one of those pieces of wood right here. And if you do that, you're gonna to need to put another piece of wood up here so they don't poop in their water, so it protects it. But I didn't do any of that because, like I said, we're gonna water our animals in the yard. So guys, that is the complete build of the coop. I thank my wife for helping and all my kids. And it's been a fun build and this coop is gonna last us many, many years. Just wanted to tell you a quick story. This chicken coop is a coop that we've been building for years, probably 15 years now. I used to sell them, and uh, I found that a lot of people don't appreciate the craftsmanship of the coop. So I'm providing it to you guys in hopes that you'll share it and build it and uh, get this information out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And remember, if you like this video, please, please, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps us in getting our information out there. We'll check you on the next video.